Welcome to evolution and the evidence supporting it. In this presentation, I will describe what evolution is, how it works, and detail the evidence for the theory. What is biological evolution? Biological evolution is changing the genetic composition of populations during successive generations, often resulting in the development of a new species. The mechanism for evolution include natural selection acting upon the genetic variation among individuals, mutation, migration, and genetic drift. Natural selection is the process by which species adapt to their environment. Natural selection leads to evolutionary change when individuals with certain characteristics have a greater survival or reproductive rate than other individuals in a population and pass on those genetic traits to their offspring. Natural selection is a consistent difference in survival and reproduction between different genotypes or even different genes and what we call reproductive success. It accomplished for biology what Newton and his successors has accomplished in physics. It provided a pure, natural explanation for the order and the appearance of design. Some say evolution is just a theory. There are two distinct differences between a theory and a scientific theory. A scientific theory summarizes a hypothesis, or group of hypotheses, that have been supported with repeated testing. If enough evidence accumulates to support a hypothesis, it moves to the next step in a scientific method and becomes accepted as a valid explanation of a phenomenon. This relies on equivocating the common uses of the term theory, meaning idea or guess, with the scientific meaning. Theories are the single highest level of scientific achievement, and nothing is just a theory. That would be like saying Bill Gates is just a multi-billionaire. One might say that the notion of evolution is just a theory in the same way that cell theory and the theory of gravitation are just theories. Theories are the main goal in science and no explanation can achieve a higher rank besides laws, such as the law of gravitation. A theory is unsubstantiated and a guess at best. Charles Darwin's book On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection caused quite a stir when it appeared in 1859. Evidence to support evolution and natural selection, of course, have occurred over time and now scientists accept that evolution is a fact and that natural selection explains very well how adaptive evolution takes place. Natural selection can change the species in small ways, causing a population to change color or size over the course of several generations. This is called microevolution. However, natural selection is also capable of much more. Given enough time and enough accumulated changes, natural selection can create an entirely new species. It can turn dinosaurs into birds, apes into humans, and amphibious mammals into whales. The physical and behavioral changes that make natural selection possible happen at the level of DNA and genes. Such changes are called mutations. Mutations can be caused by chemical errors in DNA replication. Mutations can even be deliberately induced in order to adapt to a rapid changing environment. Most times, mutations are either harmful or neutral but in rare instances, a mutation might prove beneficial to the organism. If so, it will become more prevalent in the next generation and spread throughout the population. Let's move on to the evidence for evolution. I will give you the smoking gun evidence for evolution and that would be transitional fossils. A transitional fossil is a fossil of an organism that has traits from multiple evolutionary stages, such as Archaeopteryx, which transitioned between feathered dinosaurs and basal primitive birds. The species was roughly the size of a raven, with broad wings that were rounded at the ends and a tail compared to its body length. In particular, it shares the following features with dinosaurs. Jaws with sharp teeth, three fingers with claws, a long bony tail, extended second toes, feathers, and various skeletal features. These features make it a clear candidate for a transitional fossil between dinosaurs and birds. It plays an important role, not only in the study of the origin of birds, but in the study of dinosaurs. Archaeopteryx seemed to confirm Darwin's theories and has since become a key piece of evidence for the origin of birds and confirmation of evolution. Next up we have Pezzocerin. 
This Serenian or full equated herbivorous mammal is said to have a hippopotamus lifestyle. It is stated as hard evidence for transitional form change between land mammals and sea mammals. This mammal was fully capable of walking on land with four developed legs that could support the body weight out of water as in land mammals. Aquatic adaption so that it probably spent most of its time in the water. This is the intermediate form of the mammal which demonstrates with unquestionable certainty the evolutionary transition between terrestrial and aquatic life. Marine biologists concocted a rather humorous name for Serenians, which is sea cows because they look like aquatic bloated cows. For example, manatees and dugongs. Manatees are on the verge of extinction, however dugongs are confirmed by marine biologists to be extinct. Duodons began to lose their hind legs from their ancestor Rhodocetus and Pachycetus, all the way up to modern whales who still have their vestigial hind legs. Pachycetus is the oldest fossil whale, which nostrils are on the top of its mouth. Rhodocetus nostrils has proceeded up the snout and is now in the middle. In modern whales, the nostrils are on the top of the head, which is called a blowhole. These lines of fossil record indicate clearly that four-legged mammals evolved to our modern aquatic whales. Next up we have Microraptor. This bird was a small four-winged dinosaur and provide insightful evidence about the primitive evolutionary relationship between birds and dinosaurs. This bird had long feathers that create aerodynamic surfaces on the arms and tail but also surprisingly on the legs. Microraptor had four wings, one on each side of its forelegs and hind legs. The 24 centimeter creature had feathers and was able to glide in between trees, yet it also has a tail that is clearly dinosaurian. The Microraptor is the tiniest mature dinosaur ever discovered. The paleontologist who discovered it name was Zing Zhu, and claimed the animal was so small it could fit into the palm of your hand, though it would probably have taken a bite out of your hand if you tried. Lastly, we have what paleontologists call the eighth wonder of the world, Darwinius Mosley, or Ida. This fossil was found in a mesopit pit which is nearby Germany. The fossil is said to be of Samian or anthropoid lineages. Samians include monkeys, apes, and would include human beings as well. Ida is said to be 47 million years old and scientists say she is the missing evolutionary link between two primate families, including the ones that produce human beings. She has fingertips, which are about 2 millimeters wide, and have attachments of nails not claws like in most animals. Scientists say that Ida does not necessarily point out the human missing link. We could not be dealing with our greatest grandmother, but rather be dealing with our greatest aunt. In conclusion, our universe could have remained void of life, only leaving physical constants, relativity, and chemistry of time and space. The fact that there is something rather than nothing is an astonishing spectacle to say the least. And not only did evolution occur, it produced living beings capable of comprehending the complex process. Multiple lines of facts have been observed through comparative anatomy, molecular comparison, Darwin's finches in the Galapagos rapidly adapting to an immigrant finch from another island, and the fossil record. All the aforementioned evidence for evolution indicate that all life on this planet is related. Our time span is limited to a hundred years, and that's if you're lucky, and I am stupefyingly marveled to live in an era where the intelligence of man have evolved to its current intellectual excellence. Thanks for watching Evolution. If you enjoyed this presentation, subscribe to my channel and share. I would like to take this time to promote a YouTube channel in which I've learned how to use Adobe After Effects. Check It is a YouTuber who produced tutorials on basic, intermediate, and advanced levels of After Effects. He also worked with Photoshop, Cinema 4D, and Sony Vegas. Head over to his amazing channel if you're interested in professional media production and animation. While you're at it, check out some of my previous presentations on screen.